What's up, guys? Welcome back. If you're new to our Facebook group, Mobility Simplified for Weightlifters, or new to our YouTube channel, which is Trofner Physical Therapy and Strength and Conditioning, I just want to give you an overall welcome. I want to say we are very grateful to have you all in this community, growing together, learning together, and trying to excel and hit our goals together as well. Um, so as always, I'll give you a quick intro. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and a strength and conditioning coach, and we are coming at you with a new topic, one of my favorites, um, that's one of the really most forgotten topics for the month of May coming up here. So we just did the lower back for the month of April. So if you missed that, go back and watch that April content. We have four videos on lower back disc bulges versus herniations, how to diagnose it and how to treat it properly, starting with mobility, working your way up to strength. All right. This month, we're going to talk about the thoracic spine. So the mid back area, kind of between your shoulder blades mainly. Okay. So right under the cervical spine, right above that lumbar spine area. So we are going to talk about really in detail how the thoracic spine kind of functions and how it relates to shoulder health. And we're going to mainly go into detail on shoulder impingement because thoracic spine rigidity or stiffness can really relate to kind of having a really tight or kind of immobile shoulder joint and developing issues at that shoulder joint because you need good thoracic spine extension and movement throughout the vertebrae in order to get those arms up over the head. So we're going to talk about three things in detail tonight. Number one is the posture test. We're going to talk about why the thoracic spine is so important to have good mobility at and not be too stiff in order to get good overhead shoulder mobility. Number two is thoracic spine and shoulder anatomy. How do those two play a role and function together and help each other? And then number three is the most common diagnosis that we see, which I might have already given away. <laughs> All right, so pay attention, guys. We'll start with the posture test first. So a really good test here. Try and lift your arms up over your head just simply here to here. See how far you can get, right? See if you have any pinching in the front of your shoulders. If you don't have any shoulder issues, you should be able to do it without any issues. And then what I want you to do now is take a step back, do it again. But I want you to do it with rounded shoulders, okay? So now... I want you to round those shoulders forward, bring your head forward a little bit, because typically when your shoulders round, your head will round too, and you'll see that in a second when I share my screen, I show you some of the anatomy behind it. So here rounded, head forward, and I'm gonna try and lift up as high as I can go. I can come to about shoulder height, right? And that's what stops me. Okay, so this is an important test. If you did it properly, you should find that the more rounded you are, and the more kind of kyphotic posture, meaning the more kind of C shape of your spine at the top there, and the more your head goes forward, typically the less overhead mobility you're going to get. So that's telling you that you need good thoracic extension mobility in that area between your two shoulder blades. Because if you do that test again, but you now you pin your head back, right, into kind of retraction, and you pull your shoulders back into retraction or shoulder squeeze, and I try and lift up, it's 10 times easier, and I improve my motion by about two or three times. Okay, just from simply kind of getting more mobility at that thoracic spine and engaging some of those muscles kind of between my shoulder blades, like my rhomboids, for instance. Okay, so let's show you what's going on at the thoracic spine and the shoulder um, through anatomy. And this is an awesome app that I use with a lot of my clients. I get no kickback from it. It's called Muscle in Motion. If you guys really like it, um, you can purchase it and you can do a subscription month to month. All right, so we should be able to see my screen now. Right, so we're going to start with this little simple kind of video here. So this is really just showing you kind of the median axis here is like a string that is stretched. So when you go into bad posture, you're going to see what happens here. Your shoulders are going to slouch forward like I just showed you, and your hips are going to go forward. But realistically, your hips are going back the opposite way. So as your shoulders round forward, your hips are kind of tucking backwards. So you have an anterior rounding or forward rounding of your shoulders. You have a posterior tilting or posterior pelvic tilt of your uh, hips here. So watch what happens. See that posterior tilt there? So as you round here, this goes back. So the head goes forward, the shoulders go forward, and this goes backwards, all right? So they're showing you, look how important it is to pull your head back. Because the minute you pull your head back, it takes you from that rounded shoulder posture to more of a nice sustained kind of shoulder back posture. So that's why it's so important, and that's why the two function so closely together. So we're going to show you the shoulder press here like why it's so important to have really good kind of mobility in your thoracic spine. So this is a good example of showing like how it's kind of done when you're not in good mobility here, right? So see that pressing, see how the kind of nothing's moving here. And I see this in God, probably like eight out of 10 people that I do assessments with their mid back is just so tight and locked up myself included. That's why I do a lot of stretching for it. Cause I'm on the computer so much treating people. Um, you got to take care of yourself too. Super important. Um, but because he's not really kind of engaging those muscles back here, his head's a little bit forward. You're getting no movement here. So you'll see at the top, 
he's not getting full range of motion. He's stopping with those arms kind of down in front of the ears where they should be realistically two or three inches back. So he's probably has 150, 160 degrees of shoulder flexion, right? Which is this position where we want 180, which is your arm straight up by your ears. Okay. So we want it back there, but it's difficult because we're not getting any motion here, right? All the motion's happening at the shoulder. And if you, if you don't have any motion at your mid back, Where's all the stress and strain going to go to over time, guys? It's going to get shifted to the front of the shoulder. It's going to go to your supraspinatus tendon of your rotator cuff. It's going to go to your bicep tendon next, okay? And then you might get develop impingement. So you might get pinching here, some discomfort, because you spend so much time here, and then you're adding load to it. So you're compressing structures against each other um, just because there's kind of nowhere to function. And then sometimes you'll compensate by leaning your whole trunk backwards. And that doesn't become good either, because that gets more strain and stress here, or it puts more stress and strain onto your lower back. So if I can draw like a nice picture, I would draw like a fire symbol on the front of the shoulder here and on the lower back. So you wanna be careful with that, not to be kind of um, doing too much load if you don't have really good kind of mobility through that mid back area. All right, so hopefully that that's kind of makes sense to you and that just tells you how important it is for those shoulders to kind of function fully. All right, so this is a look at the kind of a torso or the trunk from a side view. Right, this is your shoulder joint. This is your scapula or your shoulder blade. Um, so you can see if your shoulders round forward, your shoulder blade is going to round forward with it. All right. And then it's going to kind of your thoracic spine is going to do the same thing. It's going to round forward. It's going to get really tight. So when I refer to thoracic spine, I'm referring to the area that starts kind of right here, right in this area, all the way down here until you, you get to your lumbar spine. So it's T1 to T12. There's 12 vertebrae in total. We're more so focused on the ones from kind of here to here. So that's kind of top of the scapula here, right? Um, this is kind of called T3 in a lot of people. It could be T2, um, but T3 is most commonly based on the research. And then the inferior border here at the bottom is T7. Okay, so T7 is in line with this. T3 is in line with this, okay? So this is the spine of the scapula and then the inferior border. So T3 to T7 is the area I'm talking about. And then you have another area called your cervical thoracic junction. We call it CTJ for short. And that's above here, which you can't really see. It's the area between your cervical spine and your first vertebrae. So C7 to T1, right? So it's this area kind of right in here. Um, and that's the area that gets commonly tight in a lot of people because of our flex posture over long periods of time, right? So anytime you're doing overhead pressing movements, we want to see these shoulder blades going kind of down and out to the side. It should be going down and up like this, down and up like this, okay? And then anytime you're pressing as well, we want to see these shoulder blades kind of also getting pulled together a little bit. So they're going to come up and out and they're going to get pulled together slightly at the top. Okay. So we, we need to kind of get good function here of this area. So we need to be able to get good kind of movement of extension, meaning the vertebrae should close when you extend and move closer to each other. If it's really tight and rigid and stiff. Um, and this is especially common in a lot of older people just because like they didn't do a lot of exercise throughout their life or they had a job that required them to be in this position for like eight to 10 hours a day. Um, it's really hard to reverse that. So you got to make sure you work on your mobility and then stabilize it after you get that mobility so you don't lose it um, in order to kind of properly overhead press. OK, um, so hopefully that makes sense, guys. And the most common diagnosis for the third thing we wanted to cover is shoulder impingement. Right. So shoulder impingement, you can see the shoulder joint here. Try not to click on it so the kind of names don't pop up, but um, right on top of the humerus bone there, it's your humeral head, right? In between it, it sits in the glenoid cavity of your shoulder joint. So you can see there's a little bit of space between there. You can see a little bit of black from the black round uh, kind of color. Um, in a, someone who has impingement, typically this humeral head is shifted higher. So it'd be up here where my cursor is, and it would be more pressed against this glenoid. So where it should look like this, it would be more so like this. And that's because it's getting impinged because of that rounded shoulder posture. Like, look at your shoulder blade. It connects to your humeral head. So, like, if you're rounding your shoulders when you're pressing, you don't have good flexibility, it's going to put a lot of stress and strain on the structures between this kind of acromion here, the top of the bone, and then the kind of bottom of the humeral head here. Okay, and that's how you get labral tears, you know, rotator cuff tendon issues, um, tendonitis, like all sorts of things. Impingement is an umbrella term for, we just know that there's pain and inflammation most likely in the shoulder joint. Um, it could be it could be caused from tendonitis of the rotator cuff. It could be caused from bicep tendonitis. Um, typically, it's from overuse and from kind of rigid or tight thoracic spines and tight pec and lat muscles, sometimes tight delts too, right? And then weak rotator cuffs. Um, so there, there's a lot of different things that go into play. I don't want to overwhelm you guys, but that's why it's so important to get properly assessed. And you hear me say that all the time.
Okay. So hopefully I'm um, giving you that visual um, to kind of focus on that. It made a little more sense um, just so you guys can paint a picture to it. So I'm not just like talking in the dark here to you. Um, so just to recap, all right, we talked about three things in detail, right? We talked about posture. So we talked about um, trying to lift your arms up over your head, how it's really hard to do with your shoulders forward and your head forward, but it's easy to do with your head pushed back into kind of retraction, like a chin tuck, and then retraction of your shoulder blades, like a shoulder squeeze back, right? It becomes a lot easier, unlocks everything. Number two is thoracic spine and shoulder anatomy. We showed you the relationship between the cervical and thoracic spine, how they function together. So that's why your head has to be in a good position anytime you're doing overhead lifting and how you have to have good motion of your middle back between your shoulder blades in order for them to move properly as you do an overhead press. And then number three, we talked about the most common diagnosis, which is shoulder impingement. And sometimes with impingement, you can get overuse from some of those muscles in the front being your bicep tendon, anterior deltoid. And then sometimes you can form some knots around your shoulder blade too near your thoracic spine, which we didn't kind of go through too much. Um, so does that all make sense? Say yes down below if it does. If it doesn't, say no, and I will explain it more to you in detail. Um, I hope the posture test makes sense. I hope you understand why your mid-back mobility is so important for shoulder health and how it can drastically, drastically reduce your risk and chance of developing shoulder impingement or any unbearable knots on the inner border of that shoulder blade. So guys, this is our first video. Again, thank you so much for watching. All I ask is that you share this video with a friend or family member who can benefit from kind of loosening up their mid-backs. Maybe they sit a lot, maybe they drive a lot, maybe they have shoulder issues. This is a game changer for anyone with shoulder issues, or maybe they have a back issue and this will help with that too. Um, so again, these are the two kind of mo most common restrictions that we see um, that relate to the mid-back and the shoulder. And this is how you kind of fix it and work on it. Um, if you guys are interested, you want to know more, um, you can email me at Corey at chalknerptsc.com um, or comment down below. Um, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, we have new videos coming out every week, once a week. Um, we're hitting topics that you guys voted on. All right. Thanks so much, guys. And I will see you next week. Have a great rest of your Wednesday.